about the lone survivor. His name is Marcus Luttrell. He's a good friend of mine. In 2005, he was injured in combat in Afghanistan during a battle that led to the largest loss of life in American Navy SEAL history. He called me on the way home from the studio, I think it was on Thursday, and he told me a story that horrified me. It will, I think this story will move you to your core. I'd like to introduce you to retired Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, author of the book Lone Survivor. He's with me now. Marcus, can you tell me in your own words what happened? Uh, was it on Wednesday night at 1 a.m.? Yes, sir. Um, I had been in the hospital the previous week and just gotten out. And I, I was, I don't sleep at night, so I was laying up and I'd been trans going back and forth between the houses and stuff like that. And around 1.30 uh, I was laying down and I heard a gunshot go off out in front of my uh, fence. So immediately I got up, grabbed the gun, grabbed the flashlight and started searching, you know, running around the house, checking everything out, went to my mom's room, asked her if she was okay. I, she said, yeah. I said, stay in the house, don't move until till I come back and get you. Then I heard a bunch of talking and I could see some headlights in the distance. So I, I, I leaned up against the tree line, I skirted all the way down the tree line down on my property, belly crawled underneath the fence and then got up into a ditch. And when I did, I turned, when I came around this corner, there was a car standing out there with, uh, you know, four guys, four men standing out there. And uh, my, dog, my, uh, my dog laying dead in the ditch. Now this, you know, one any dog, you know, after Afghanistan, uh, I get, they, were, they gave me this dog for rehabilitation. So, you know, it was like a, it just wasn't like a pet or anything like that. It meant more to me than anything. Okay, explain. So I draw hey, down hey, and hold try on, to... Hold, uh, on, hold on just a second. Marcus, you have to... The name of your dog was Daisy. Please explain why your dog was named Daisy. Uh, well, it stood for my four teammates. The, or all of us were out on the mountain that day that died. Uh, Daisy stood for uh, Danny, Axe, Southern Boy, and Yankee. That was Mikey. Southern Boy is me. And obviously Danny and, and uh, Axe, Matt Axe. So, you know, she... They murdered her cold blood. I mean, it's not. She's a yellow lab, for God's sakes. I mean, she was. I let her out at night. She went out to the front gate, sitting at the fence underneath the light. I'm sure they just pulled up, got out of the car, and all they had to do was clap their hands. She'd walk right up to you and lay down. And uh, they shot her with a 357 Magnum, right in the shoulder. Ex execution. And by the time I got out there, yeah, they executed her. They killed her. That's murder in my in my book. Okay, so, so I drew down to kill the. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, pu I pull out, you know, I had a gun on me. I pulled down, and uh, right before I could get a shot off, they jumped in the car and took off, which was good. Actually, it turned out better because I got, I was able to run to my truck and get, get in my truck and then took out after them. I caught them about three miles down the road. They were just joyriding. They were out killing, killing dogs. So I, I, uh, I pitted them into a ditch, came out the back the front of my truck, came around the bumper, and was going to try and shoot the driver. So I stopped the car. And then, uh, well, who knows what would have happened after that. But anyways, this, this continued on for, for a while. Anyways, they got in front of me. I couldn't get a clean shot off. Once they got in front of me, they were in a car. And my truck, I got a big truck. I just couldn't keep up with them. So I chased them for four counties. Almost, we were into the fourth county. I was on the phone with uh, 911 calling through the dispatch. And I was like, look, I'm on this road going through this county. I don't think we slowed down under 110 miles an hour the whole time we were going. And by the time we got to uh, on Alaska or into Polk County, it's like I said, four counties down. They had a roadblock set up. The cop wheeled around, and uh, when he hit the rollers, they pulled over. I pulled in front of him, came out. Uh, I locked down behind my bumper and drew my gun again. And the the sheriff took over from there, got him out of the car, laid him all down flat and stuff like that. And uh, he pulled me to the back of his cruiser while he was searching their car. And the thing about it was, is that, you know, I was just like, you know, I was asking, like, what's one of y'all killed my dog? And they were like, you think your dog was, is it, was something? Yeah, wait till we kill you, you know, this, and talking smack to me, you know, and I was just like, what's going through my head is like, <laughs> it's, well, it's un unimaginable. I can't even say it on TV what I was, what I was going to do to him, you know, yeah, I mean, you, you know, can't You know, there's, there's one thing, I mean, I these, this just shows how stupid these guys are. You know, killing a dog is just insanity nut job stuff in the first place but killing the lone survivor's dog 
even more nuts than you could possibly imagine. All right. So, Marcus, yeah, they we, were laughing about it. I could hear them laughing about it, you know, but, over the fence, over the over the tree line when I was coming up on them. And I want to I want to do. Um, first of all, you didn't shoot anybody and I can't imagine no. what you were going. You've been you've been trained to shoot people um, and you didn't a responsible gun owner. The second part of this uh, story is two of the guys. Do we have two mug shots? Do we have both? Here's one. This is uh, Alfonso Hernandez. He's charged with cruelty to animals. Um, he has, uh, these guys were out shooting dogs. They have killed others. Do you know how many, Marcus? No, just the, uh, the report was that this, this is one, one, one the first time they've been out doing it. Okay. That's all um, I know. The, so. uh, the next one is Michael Edmonds. Do you have Michael Edmonds? Now, there's a warrant out for him. You see this dirt bag, you call police. You find out where that you see this guy anywhere, where just in Texas, uh, anywhere. You see that face, you call the police. Gresh, can we get a phone number? Um, we'll put a phone number, and I, I want to play that. I want to put his face up out of every break today. Let's find this dirt bag, Marcus. The other two, I yes, guess, sir. are not implicated in this. They were just sitting in the back. This is what police say. They were just sitting in the back of the cruiser, so they're known as witnesses. Well, you know, that's that's a problem with, with people that kill dogs. You know what I mean? It's, if it was a person, that would have been cons conspiracy to commit murder. All four of them would have been in prison. Now, I consider that dog just like a daughter to me. So these guys can sit there and laugh about it. Oh, it's serious now because I ran them down and got the cops on them and they're in jail. And uh, wait, oh, oh wait, I was just sitting there and I did. I try. I tried to talk them out of it. You gonna you gonna feed me that load of crap, man? You sat there and were laughing about it. So I mean, you can feed lines all day, but I can see right through it. I mean, people who buy off on that stuff for you know a week. I'm not weak. I know what they were doing. And when they got caught, you know. They get yellow, that yellow streak right up their back, and then they start, you know, coming up with all these different stories and stuff like that, and it's crap. And, uh, you know, you need to be held accountable for what you do. You know, if you're going to go out and kill somebody, and you get caught, then you man up to it. It's just that easy. You know, Marcus, I talked to your mom. I, I talked to your mom, when was that, Friday when I talked to you last? And, uh, and yeah. I talked to your mom. You, you, <laughs> you the funniest, because you are one, you're one of the, you're one of the, uh, baddest dudes I think I've ever met on far as you get the job done and uh, one time we were supposed to meet someplace and uh, <laughs> your mother uh, came with you and you work uh, you know you, you, she has a ranch and you work on the ranch and everything else you kind of watch over your mom and uh, you came and you said I'm sorry I'm late Mr. Beck uh, but mom wanted me to finish some chores um, your yeah. mother said to me said uh, Glenn this is why we need we need our guns. We're out here. When Marcus is gone, I'm out here all by myself. How am I going to be able to protect myself? There are, most people are not crazy, but there are crazy people. And sometimes we don't put the crazy people in jail. Marcus, I think America is going to demand that these guys spend, uh, I think maximum of is two years in jail. We will do everything we can to make sure. I know PETA, we called them. PETA is watching tonight. Um, I, uh, I hope to God that they are uh, going to join us. Marcus, we will talk to you again, my friend. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. Stand by. Glenn Beck is brought to you by the UPS Store, Mailbox Services, and a whole lot more.